Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Tellit and CradlePoint webinar, Connected Machines, Revolutionizing Manufacturing with IIoT Remote Connectivity. I'm Amanda Flink, the Head of Global Events here at Tellit, and I will be moderating today's event. Um, to start off, let's get to know our speakers. To explain this topic today, I'm pleased to be joined by three speakers. First, we have Ricardo Baranello, the SVP of IoT Platforms at Tellit. Hey, Ricardo, thanks for joining us. Hello, Amanda. It's great to be here. Thank you. And second, we have Michael Dickens, the Global Sales Engineer at CradlePoint. Hi, Michael. Hi. Thanks, thanks for having me. And lastly, we have Matthew Heaver, the FAE Solutions Engineer at Telet. Now, just before I hand it over to Ricardo to start our presentation, I have a few quick reminders. I would like to encourage our audience to interact by posting questions. Um, we will have time to answer some of those at the end of our presentation. Simply submit a question by posting in the box to the right of the slides that you see on your screen. Also, please be sure to check out the resources section in the upper right-hand corner of your screen for some additional information on today's topic. And finally, we will send out the replay link to all attendees at the conclusion of this webinar. Um, and with that, Ricardo, I will hand it over to you to kick us off today. Perfect. Thank you so much, Amanda, and uh, good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, uh, uh, depending on where you are. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this exciting webinar. First of all, I would like to say how excited I am with this partnership with CradlePoint. I think that uh, the combination of uh, talent uh, solutions and software uh, and CradlePoint hardware brings a complete new game-changing solution to the market, uh, and uh, it's very exciting uh, to be here talking a little bit about this. So we're starting with an overview in terms of where this uh, IoT market is. Of course, that IoT is not something new anymore. It's something that is out there for quite some time, and it became a huge business. So uh, the economic impact, it depends on, uh, you know, the source that you read, but it's always measured in trillions of dollars. That's how significant it is, IoT uh, for the economy, for the society. Uh, and I really like this uh, research from McKinsey that they do the breakdown of where IoT is impacting and where it is impacting the most. And certainly it's impacting in our life. Everybody today has a wearable. Everybody today has a smart home device. Everybody has a connected uh, energy meter in their house. Uh, but where IoT is really transforming from an economical point of view is in factory solutions, is in the industrial IoT applications. Being this industrial, that could mean the shop floor, but also all different types of machines that produce some type of uh, uh, industrial goods and process in our daily life like a car wash machine or a power generation or the cell tower infrastructure out there. And when you have IoT technology connecting these devices, it's really incredible the uh, impact on the economic output that you have. And McKinsey says that basically a third of all the economic output of IoT is in industrial solutions where companies that they deploy this type of technology that Talit and CradlePoint they are bringing to the market, they tend to have a cost savings between 5 and 40%, depending on the level of digital maturity that these companies are. I personally believe that IoT exists for three types of things. One that is for you to make money by taking existing equipment, machines, and transforming this in a new innovative type of business model. How can I, instead of selling a machine, how can I sell a machine as a service and have a recurring revenue out of this? Today, with the combination of a cradle point gateway with TeleDevice YC in there, we can have out-of-the-box connected machines uh, deployed in the field, what is uh, very impactful in terms of creating new opportunities. Factories, they also want to save money by reducing the cost of their process and certainly by having data-driven uh, decisions guided by IoT. These companies, they can reduce their cost of operations based on that. 
And certainly they can stay compliant by having all the traceability, all the control in every step of the process by collecting data from different sensors that they have. So indeed, uh, the transformation that IoT brings into the society, especially for the industrial types of use cases, it's very impactful. But what's very challenging when you're talking about industrial is how complex is the footprint of the solutions that you have out there. When you go to a production line, just like this one that we have here in this picture, you're going to see several different types of components being PLCs from different vendors like Siemens, like Rockwell. Some of them talking open protocols like uh, OPC. Some smart devices uh, for smart buildings uh, talking maybe BACnet. Some CNCs uh, talking native protocols or MT Connect. Some different sensors, people in the process. And how can you interconnect everything? Basically, that's what we do. So Telit uh, spent decades, actually even before it was Telit, when Telit acquired this business from IBM uh, back in 2013, uh, we uh, put the focus in terms of saying, OK, IoT needs to be this glue, this smart connection between all the different machines and all the different IT systems. And we need to bring with one, bring one smart solution for you to do this data collection, data transformation, integration, and data automation between different machines, different IT systems, and the cloud. And today, device-wise, uh, the, the, the way that I like to describe it is a common layer between any type of machine, any type of system and the layer that allows you to collect the data, to process the data, and to bring, this, to bring an application live without writing a single line of code. As I mentioned, this business is started inside IBM. Actually, this product is started in IBM in 1986 as a product called PlantWorks. Uh, then our CTO, John Kiever, did a spin-off of this group that was acquired in 2013 by Talit. And then we bring device-wise and secure-wise into our product portfolio. So the, the, the magnitude of our software is a consequence of decades of investment in, in R&D. So it is a very mature product that really allows companies to be IoT ready without writing a single line of code, reducing so much the total cost of ownership of their solutions. Because instead of creating custom code, custom application, now based on the cradle point uh, devices, you can have any type of machine connected. You can create applications on the edge, visualize the data, and integrate it with uh, the cloud. DeviceWise uh, won several awards, including the IoT Product of the Year in 2022, and ABI Research positioned Talit as a leader in smart manufacturing platforms. We are very happy with all the different awards that we have. And now I, will, I would like to pass the ball uh, to Michael. Michael, please go ahead. Thank you, Ricardo. So this quick overview of who is CradePoint and its solution is and how we come together to partner with Telex is an amazing software solution. He was just talking about how that comes together. So CradePoint was actually founded back in 2006. You know, we were focused on being the worldwide leader in wireless LAN. Well, when I say wireless LAN, I'm really meaning 3G is where we got started, then we went to 4G, and now into 5G networks. Now even for private 5G or even public 5G networks, you know, we were very focused on that cellular communication with gateways, routers, devices, making sure we can get all this connected, and even in an industrial area where you're able to do remotely or in a factory, as Ricardo was just showing, to have those devices to be able to bring the network up to that brand new 5G world. We are owned by Ericsson. We were actually purchased back in October of 2020. Uh, and you know, the, the reason for this is because with Ericsson being one of the worldwide leaders in providing 4G, 5G networks for that we all connect to today or privately, CradlePoint is focused on the edge side where we be able to build the products, be able to connect all these different applications, and be able to get that communication up and running. A few things, you know, for the solution that we want to talk about today is really our net cloud service architecture, right? How do we bring all these pieces together? Is it just a piece of hardware, a router, or a gateway that you put a SIM in there and, you know, tell it just shows up automatically? No, there's a lot of pieces and parts that we come to play here, especially when we talk about the Industry 4.0 world. 
You gotta have your interfaces and devices. You need to have your um, control and plane to be able to have NetCloud, for example, manager, be able to control the devices and what they can do, configurations, firmware. We know there's all these pieces that you gotta think about when you're building a network. And so with Create a Point Solution, we're able to bring all this into one single platform to be able to manage that deployment configuration and security. For that, we actually have included a lot of intelligence, very focused, being the worldwide leaders in wireless WAN on 4G and 5G, and the quality of the connections, getting connections up and running automatically, be able to do updates over the air, and be able to have those solutions up and running in a very highly available scenario, but also secure. Um, we, you'll see a few of the features that we have here. I'm not going to go through them all today. Um, but, you know, a couple of things like ICS, IDS meant for IoT, or if you're running in those specific networks, you need to know that your packets and everything that you have running at that, that site, whether brownfield or greenfield, is going to be able to get connected and stay secure. And so these are just a few of the building blocks that come together for our NetCloud service to be able to run our product. But together, what CradlePoint has done is taken what DeviceWise has, an amazing software Ricardo was just introducing you to, and be able to automatically download it by controlling through NetCloud from one site to 10,000 different devices at once to be able to get that communication up and running and, de and deploy that software. We're actually using something called Docker containers to be able to run the software. We automatically can pull it and install it on all the devices and then monitor it through NetCloud Manager, making sure that all the software is running correctly to hook up to all the machine, whether HMI or Modbus, OPC, everything that, you know, uh, tell it does so well. And then CradlePoint can bring in the solution with our routers and doing the communication over 4G, 5G networks, whether it's public or private. You know, private networks becoming very popular in the, the factories, et cetera, uh, to be able to have that communication up and running. Once that's all done, you know, you have your management plane, and then you have your data plane, and that's where we're able to bring this together for the solution for the device-wise platform itself. So I'll we'll kind of talk about a little bit how that, what that platform looks like, and then we'll kind of get into it together on how we're going to bring this together for market. Ricardo, I'll pass you. back to you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So let me be very quick here so you guys have time to see, uh, you know, the product live. Uh, Matthew Kiever will open the platform and create in front of your eyes a real IoT solution uh, based on the Cradle Point gateways. But let's talk a little bit about what the architecture of this uh, solution looks like. So basically, device-wise is a software. And this software can be installed in any type of OS. In that specific use case, we are installing the, the software on the gateway itself, uh, what provides several advantages in terms of reducing the total cost of the solution, providing out-of-the-box cellular connectivity for devices that will be separated from each other, and uh, reducing the number of boxes that you would need for this type of application. When device-wise is installed in the cradle point gateway, the software comes with hundreds of drivers. That means that now you can collect data from any type of device. When I mean any type of device, I really mean any type of device. Think that from PLCs, we can talk basically to every single one of them, open, using open protocols such as OPC UA, OPC DA, uh, Modbus, or native drivers like Siemens, Rocco, Omram, Mitsubishi, uh, uh, Schneider, and so many more. We can talk to CNC machines, all the different CNC controllers like Fanox, like Siemens 840Ds, etc. We can collect data from robots. We can collect data from sensors uh, using uh, Modbus or other types of protocols. We can collect data from smart uh, buildings types of devices like using BackNet. We have more than 325 drivers available for you to collect data from any type of machine. For you to collect data from these uh, uh, machines, it's as simple as installing a printer at your computer. You will select your IP address, get all the tag tree auto narrated, and now on the edge, you can filter this data. You can transform this data. You can create math. You can do a full HMI in a cradle point gate. That means that if you are a machine builder and you your intention is to have a connected machine, then in one single uh, gateway, you can have all your data collection and the front end edge data visualization, replacing maybe a $4,000, $5,000 HMI 
equipped. All this data can be sent uh, directly to the cloud where you can have the visualization of the performance of all your machines. And if you need to fix something over the air, you can have our secure remote access. So you have now the capability of accessing that specific gateway or even one layer lower at your uh, network so you can change, for example, the ladder logic of a certain controller. So think how powerful that is, is collecting data from any type of machine in minutes, as this is a no-code platform, you can create all your logic, all your data visualization, all your cloud integration and IT integration, so now these machines, they can be fully connected. If you think in terms of this combination of device-wise plus cradle point, we are solving every single layer uh, that exists between edge and cloud, replacing several different uh, software layers in one single platform. That makes this platform the most cost-effective solution that is out there for you to have a connected machine. We solve the data collection, so now you don't need to buy a cap or a metric on, for example. With device-wise running on the cradle points, you can collect the data from all your machines. You can transform this data and calculate KPIs, uh, make preventive maintenance applications, calculate your OE, etc. All these done inside device-wise, so you don't need to hire software engineers, more software engineers. You don't need to integrate this with Node-RED. Everything is in only one platform. If you want to integrate this data to a database or an SAP system, you have our IT connectors integrated in the platform, so you don't need to buy other softwares or develop in-house softwares for these types of integrations. If you want to have a full data visualization, both on the edge as well as in the cloud, you don't need to buy an additional SCADA system like an Ignition or an Avivo or a Factory Talk because device-wise comes with the full visualization, as you guys are going to see live, uh, fully integrated on the cradle point gateways. So that can replace a complete HMI or dashboarding that is needed for your project. Do you want to have a data lake in the cloud? No extra custom code that is needed. We can bring this data to any type of cloud, uh, to the Telet cloud, to the cradle point cloud, Azure, AWS, Google, etc. So we have all this bi-directional communication to any type of cloud solution out there. Do you want to have a remote access uh, to your device, including a layer two tunnel so you can fix problems in the air with all the security uh, in there? Device-wise plus cradle point, they provide you this full remote access, replacing the necessity of one extra box for you to have this type of functionality. And we have all the device management available there. So it is one single platform, one single investment that will replace the necessity of three, four, five, six different types of softwares uh, and stacks uh, there on your application. That makes this product the most cost effective, uh, bringing all the commonality and uh, all the replicability in terms of the project. So if you think device-wise uh, combined with the cradle point, think device-wise almost what we're calling an IoT OS. Uh, that means that it comes with all the, the, the tools for you to create your project, from data collection with hundreds of drivers, your edge logic where you can just drag and drop blocks of logic and create math, triggers, alarms, etc. the capability to integrate with any type of IT system, the integration with cellular connectivity and packages for this, all the cloud solutions like digital training in the cloud, remote access, device management, et cetera, all the connectivity to all the different types of public clouds, and a powerful HMI and SCADA system right on the edge. So now I would like to invite Matthew Kiever to show the product and how exciting it is uh, to see an application being created in front of your eyes. Hi everyone, I'm going to give you a quick overview of DeviceWise running on a Creative Point gateway. First off, I'm going to show you a list of packages here. Now these packages contain different types of drivers and extensions DeviceWise offers. And this is a small list of the ones we have, such as the Siemens, Rockwell, Mitsubishi, Fanuc. But we also have other type of drivers for general purpose like Modbus, MQTT, MT Connect, OPC UA, and OPC DA.
We also have the, have the ability to add OAuth2 and LDAP if you want to synchronize device-wise security with your Active Directory system. Now, once we have those drivers in place, we can go ahead and select what type of device you're interested in connecting to. It might be a FANUC, it might be an MQTT device, could be an MTT client for your CNC machine, could be a Mitsubishi PLC, it could be a generic Modbus device over Ethernet or serial connection. DeviceWise can cover all those. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at a Siemens S7-1200 PLC. I just give it a reference name and go ahead and put in the IP address. That's all I need to do for DeviceWise to be able to make that connection for it. No head time tags, no nothing. But if I wanted to, I can go more detail and make those individual changes myself. All I have to do is start the device. DeviceWise reaches out into the PLC and gathers all the individual tag information from there. From once I have that, I go ahead and highlight, read the data, and it can be read from the inputs, the outputs, the d database registers, the M registers. DeviceWise has access to all of them, but not just for Siemens, but also for a Rockwell PLC where I can read the data and watch it change in real time. But because DeviceWise drivers are dynamic and customizable, I don't just have to be worried about the driver, I can actually specify the data from one device to point to another device all I have by just doing this, zero programming whatsoever. And that's because device-wise drivers are doing all the heavy lifting in the background. All you have to do is say where the data is and where you want it to go. But let me also show you, once you have that connection, where can you put it? Well, DeviceWise has a built-in local database, and I want to use that as a demonstration for right now. You can use the database for many different things, just as collecting data in real time, as a reference, as a backup, or importing files. But for here, I'm going to create a new customized trigger that's going to get the data from the PLC. It's going to put it into the local database for now, and I'm also going to publish it to the DeviceWise cloud. Now, I'm going to show you how I can specify what type of trigger I want to create. It could be an on-demand manual, could be a scheduled trigger where I want to schedule it far out in the future. I can create a sub-trigger that's a, like a subroutine or a sub-function I can use as a template or different functionality later on. I can also use other functionality if I want from a third-party cloud like Azure, AWS, uh, cellular mode configurations, PLC logic for unsolicited messaging, MT Connect, networking paths such as FTT, FTP, MQTT, HTTP, etc. But for right now, I'm going to use a standard data trigger. I'm going to monitor my first analog input on my Rockwell PLC. Now this data is coming back as a byte format, so I'm going to convert it from a byte format to a decimal format to easily match other things I'm going to be working with. So I can go ahead and put a standard conversion formula in here, go ahead and map the data right from my Rockwell PLC, and for right now I'm going to put it to a local variable, which is a place in memory just like you would use in any other programming environment. I'm going to jump back over here, grab a local DB insert, connect up the flow path, and then once I table select it, I can go ahead and just fill in the information for timestamp, grab it right out of our built-in macros, connected, uh, sorry, converted data. I'm going to grab that right out of my local variables. Raw data, I can grab right out of my Rockwell 820. And then for the device name, I can make it dynamic or I can just type it out just like you see me doing here. Now, once I've done that, that's all my local stuff. I'm going to grab one more action block, which is going to be a published property. And this is all I'm going to need to be able to send data into the DeviceWise cloud. I need a reference ID for the data. In this case, I'm going to do something simple as PLC AI0. I'm going to take the value right out of my PLC and I can send it straight up to the cloud. Now, all I need to do now is go ahead and close the program out. So I'm going to go ahead and use an N execution success. And once I connect that up, I'm done. I don't have to do any more work or anything else. But if I wanted to do more complicated programming, I can grab an if statement, a for loop. I can do bit manipulation if I wanted to. I can grab information out of file operations such as copy files if I wanted to or more. I can also use and send data to third-party clouds such as AWS and Azure or grab any type of drill of information from other machines as well. It doesn't matter what it is, DeviceWise can handle it. And most importantly, because it DeviceWise is running on any platform, instead of being interpreted, we compile the triggers at runtime to run as object code behind the scene to give you the lowest latency as possible. So let me save the trigger here, go ahead and start it up, let it compile, run in the background, and let me show you what happens. I'm going to get the data right into the database right here. You can see the raw data coming in from the PLC, converted data, and the timestamp associated with it. 
along with the device name where it came from. So as I refresh more, you can see more data. But not only can I see that from the edge, I'm gonna go take you over to the cloud, quickly grab my web page over here, and you can see that I'm gonna be able to get it onto the cloud as well. So right now, here's my gateway right here. Go ahead and refresh the page. I can see there's the data coming in real time automatically from the edge. But I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna add what's known as a tag. It's just an organizer piece of the platform. And once I do that here, it's going to allow this cloud trigger, which is gonna be very similar to the edge triggers. It's no custom code logic running in the cloud like any other program that's cloud computing, but running in a graphical, no custom code environment where I can do math expressions, property publish, conditional statements, alarm publishing, and method execs, when I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use it to get data from one machine to another. Refresh the page one more time, and there you can see the converted data being generated right out of that cloud trigger, as well as the alarm generated based off the thresholds that I predefined. Now I can jump into the alarm here and go ahead and show you the states. We can track it by count or duration. I can see a timeline on it and a table chart as well. But not just I can see the alarm, I can take that and map it on top of the data that I'm collecting from the machine and zoom in and translate where the alarm state is changing on the, t on the fly so I can see where it's happening and map it more accordingly to give it relevance to the data I'm collecting. But now, when I don't mention the method exec before, I'm gonna to connect to a remote DeviceWise uh, gateway running enterprise, uh, which is our full version of DeviceWise. We can connect to not only local database, but external database and other pieces. Let me show you here. With one simple trigger, I'm able to receive the data from one machine, or the gateway I was showing you previously, to the gateway now running DeviceWise enterprise, receive that data right out of the cloud, take it, and then import it with a single action block right into a database on a remote server. And I can do this with any type of database. It could be an MSQL, it could be an Oracle database, could be a MSQL, could be an M SAP HANA, could be a Postgres, MS Access, or MongoDB. Doesn't matter, DeviceWise has a connection for all the different database types. And also, to no matter what type of area you're putting data into, DeviceWise has a feature called Store and Forward that applies for all our different database types. Allows you to go ahead and connect regardless of SAP, uh, WebSocket communication, make sure that your connection is secure and will never lose any data because DeviceWise will protect that data as soon as it leaves DeviceWise, and like a database. So let me show you this here. I'm gonna go ahead and select the top rows out of my database. I can show you here's the data coming in real time from machine 100 miles away to a remote server right through the platform with all the relevant information of where it came from, the raw data, converted data from the cloud, and the alarm message that's coming out of the cloud with the correct timestamp. So all that data with just DeviceWise. But let me show you how you can also visualize it as well. So I'm gonna jump into DeviceWise View, a local uh, web-based builder right on the DeviceWise gateway. You can use it on any type of platform DeviceWise runs on especially a cradle point. So I'm gonna go ahead and specify here, customize the icon a bit, give the gallery a name, just a placeholder folder for our displays. And I'm gonna go actually create our display right now. When I'm gonna give it a name simply as PLC overview. And once I've created a display, I can go ahead and add a widget very easily. Go ahead and select the data I wanna visualize, and it's that simple. If I wanted to add a title, I can go ahead and give it a title as well. Give it a name, say PLC AI0, but if I want to map it as um, graph it as well, I can go ahead and select the same data right there. I can also stylize it if I want to, change the color of the line, but I can also change the background of each individual widget as I want to. I can select different image, different gradient types, right there, done. No need complicated. I can also do this for the dashboard or display as well. So it doesn't have to be just per widget, it can be an overall change as well for any type. Now let me show you this. For the widget I have earlier, I can go ahead and put one background for a general condition, and then I'm gonna create something called a state. And states can be so dynamic for different visualization or different functionality. In this case, I'm gonna do it as both. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a conditional value statement of 2500. So every time the value goes over 2500, I'm going to select a different specific color, in this case red, for the background of the widget. So when the value goes over 2500, you'll see the change in real time. 
I'm also going to put a custom background to warn whoever's monitoring the screen that something's going on. But if they're not monitoring, I want to get their attention, I can go ahead and add an animation of our hundreds of animation. Maybe a bounce, maybe a rubber band, but we have hundreds to choose from. But not only can I read the data, I can visualize it, but I can also write data as well. So let me go ahead and select the output on my PLC right now to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Give it a quick title as well. So I'll say PLC output for now. And then I'm going ahead and grab our write widget. So just as easy it is to visualize it, I'll go ahead and write the data as well. Select the same tag on the PLC. Go ahead and anything I type on here, instantly written to the PLC. But I can also, since DeviceWise is running as a background service, instead of doing direct uh, byte typing, I can do a conversion on the fly. So I'll go ahead and type a decimal value. DeviceWise will see that and automatically convert it for me on the fly. But if I wanted to make sure I want to confirm the data, I don't want to just write it as is, I can go ahead and create a local variable uh, inside of the gallery. Instead of writing the data directly to DeviceWise, I'll write it to the local variable first. Now, once I do that, I'll grab over a customize button, which I can go give it a name to confirm. So I can say confirm, write to PLC. Go ahead and give it an icon as well. And I can go ahead and specify different types of icons, but I can also build a trigger in here as well. Now, triggers can also act within widgets. I can do something for like navigating, write data, firing a trigger, firing a sub trigger. They can use many different things. Open and close um, pop-up windows, audio, vibration, depending on what type of environment you're running device-wise, either on a display with a speaker or a smartphone with a vibration motor. It, we have the functionality of different types of outputs. Of, now for now, I'm gonna specify the uh, variable I was gonna use before, but now I'm gonna put a placeholder for the local variable of the device-wise view uh, data. So I'm gonna grab the right widget again. I'm going ahead and write a value to here, but before I write, click on the button, let me go ahead and jump right into live mode. So live mode is the production run of DeviceWise. There don't need to be having anything special. And if you see, I click the button right there. I'm going to send that data over to the global variable. DeviceWise sees the change, does the conversion on the fly, and then puts that data right into the PLC. I do that again right there to show you what's going on. But it's not just these widgets we have. I can also jump over here and say historical graph if I wanted to as well. Go ahead and map data out a of our array for right now. Specify zero, say I want 10 cells to be displayed out of the array. Go ahead and save that. Right then and there, we're displaying the data. I can also go ahead and put the data values at the point so I can see it. And if I wanted to make it a little more clear, I can make a custom background for this widget as well. Now, not just these widgets that I've shown you so far, I can rearrange them a little bit, I can drag and drop them wherever I want to, and I can save them, or I can fix them in place, however I choose. As you see, they'll dynamically expand and contract based off the resolution. But I can also add other types of widgets as well, such as drop downs, uh, check boxes, radial bars, toggle widgets. Uh, and if we don't have a widget that you think of, we actually give you a custom code widget. You can write any HTML5 code you want, such as iframes and different web pages can be imported dynamically into that. I can also show you, we're gonna grab a database widget right here, go ahead and select it, and there's the data that we we're putting into the local database of DeviceWise previously. Gonna expand it just a little bit, fill in the room, jump back to live mode, and I'm done. So that's as complicated as it needs to be to develop DeviceWise view widget. Um, sorry, DeviceWise view displays. But you can also use DeviceWise view not only on a desktop environment, but you can use it on a mobile or a tablet environment. So let me bring up my phone right here, go ahead and log in. Same username and password as I used before. Go ahead and log in, and you can see right on my smartphone, I've got access to the same environment. Click on my gallery, go ahead and open the display, and there you go. You can see the same data in real time on my desktop and my smartphone at the same time. If I go ahead and enter the value I want here to change, go ahead and tap the widget, and you can go ahead and see it's automatically changed on both screens. The reason is it's the same place, same environment, just the graphics are being generated at different places. So that's just kind of a general overview of building display, but let me show you what an example is. Now I can go ahead and use DeviceWise tunnels to access a remote display back at our headquarters in Florida. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into that machine remotely using our DeviceWise tunnels. And once I'm in there, I can actually display you a real-time OEE uh, dashboard over the internet completely remotely, but I can have, still have real-time control over it. You can see the data, go ahead and initiate a break, 
go ahead and initiate a downtime situation. You can see DeviceWise sees it automatically and change the display on the fly. So hope you like that overview. And that's DeviceWise running on a Cradle Point. Thanks, Matthew. Um, that was that was really great to, to see. Um, now, before we get to the questions, I am going to drop um, a poll on the screen here for our audience. Um, if you'd like to have one of our experts contact you, please respond here on the poll and someone will reach out. Um, we do have time for a few questions now as well. Um, and also, audience, there is still time to ask a question. So please submit using the box to the right of the slide presentation. Um, and we will do our best to cover it in the time that we've got left here. Um, let's see, we've got a bunch of questions that have come in, and let's just start here. Um, how can I try this? So please tell me, how can I get started? Uh, okay, thank you so much, Amanda, and thank you for uh, the question. Uh, it's extremely straightforward. So uh, maybe you have the, just the link here on the webinar, or you can even drop us an email in dwsales at talent.com, and we can uh, reach out to you, provide uh, the, the link. It's uh, very simple. Go here to this uh, 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 code, and you're going to see how you can download the license by yourself. We can also uh, uh, provide you a combination of the, the Cradle Point gateways plus the software so you can get started. As you could see in this amazing demo that uh, Matthew uh, made, uh, you can just uh, look at the tutorial in terms of how to use the software. As this is a no-code platform, you can create this application by yourself. It's really fast for you to create an application using this combination. Yeah, absolutely. Just to, to expand on what I was saying, I've been working with this for the past uh, year now, and I am blown away at how easy it is to deploy and then actually manage and get up and running. It's, it's extremely quick, and just the power of all the different built-in drivers that they already have if you have communication running, uh, tell it is the best platform I've seen for IoT yet. Great, thank you both. Um, and I will also mention too, um, to the audience in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, there is an additional link um, to contact us in the resources section as well. Um, next question I see here, um, can I use the dashboard application as a local HMI? Absolutely, and that's one of the points uh, that will bring uh, immediate impact for your business. So if you're buying a Cradle Point gateway and you're installing device life, that's not only a gateway. That becomes a full application container uh, for your IIoT. That means that device wise running there will be able to connect to any type of machine through the PLC or the controller level. It will translate all this data, and then you can create your full HMI, uh, as you saw in the demo, without writing a single line of code. You just select the widget, right-click, appoint to the right variable, and now I have live data from that machine being displayed on that HMI. Or you can even add buttons, text boxes, things that will make you to control the machine or interface with the process uh, uh, that you have there. So this completely replaces that old-looking HMIs that cost from five to $10,000 uh, and they are very 1980s look. So you can have a complete IoT solution running on a powerful Cradle Point gateway like this. No extra boxes needed, no extra HMIs. Then every single screen that you have there, it could be a monitor, it could be a tablet, it could be your cell phone. All these, they become uh, web HMIs for your application, reducing the total cost of your machine but giving a very live interface with the operator so productivity go up a lot. So definitely, yes, device wise plus Cradle Point replaces HMIs. Great, thanks. Um, and this next question um, is kind of just further to that. So why should I choose this joint solution, um, the combination of the hardware and software together as a package? Uh, I, I, I certainly can start with that, and Michael, if you want to, to make any yeah. additional comments, please uh, feel free. Um, 
I think that the combination of a device-wise software and Cradle Point Gateway is something that was engineered really to bring the best of the two solutions. So we use this gateway that has a lot of power to run device-wise, optimizing the process in there. Instead of having to have different boxes like you know, one industrial computer in the machine, one gateway for the connectivity, maybe one HMI. Now we are taking, just in this example, three parts, combining in just one. So you imagine how many thousands of dollars you can reduce by reducing the complexity, the number of hardware that you have there. Now you can have a much more compact application. And this combines the edge data collection, the edge data transformation, the edge data visualization, the IT OT integration, the cloud connectivity, the, the re secure remote access, all these involved in one single platform. So that's what makes this solution so unique. Yeah, just add a little more on that, you know, I'm more of the engineering side, but using NetCloud to be able to manage the deployment of it via Docker, and I'm so glad to it started using Docker because just managing and monitoring all those deployments and be able to have it save on the local database there and then be sending it to the management machine, but be able to do the upgrade simply by just saying, hey, go check for my next latest version uh, and automatically get pulled and then it's up and running very quickly without any downtime. Uh, it's just so much easier and more powerful to be able to manage your software that way all in one, one platform and to be able to have communication and to have it actually done and monitored without <laughs> having out and touch boxes directly to do updates is amazing. Um, so it's, it's a great solution to be able to put it all in one. Great, thank you. Um, let's see, the, the next question I have here, um, is there any really specific advantage going with this bundle instead of other competitors in the market? Well, I think that the the, the, the biggest benefit that I see is having one solution instead of several different layers there. I really like one of these slides that I use to compare on how we solve all the challenges from edge to the cloud. So I think that the first advantage you have is your time to market. How, how, how much it costs your time, how much it costs for you to bring more people and focus in terms of reinventing the wheel. With this solution, we can replace a data collection software, the edge uh, data analytics software, the IT integration software, the visualization software, the device management software, the secure remote access gateway and software in just one single platform. Uh, so the cost reduction is dramatic. The timing reduction in terms of the development is dramatic. And then there's the third advantage, that is how simple it is for you to manage an application like this. Because then you don't need to have a team of people with uh, that one is specialized in a, a certain type of database, the other one specialized on this, and the other one specialized on that. Because it's one integrated platform making your architecture so much simpler and so much much simpler for you to manage. So I would say that these are the, the main advantages that we see. I can say that better. I think Ricardo, Ricardo nailed it there. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. <laughs> um, okay, Ricardo, a couple um, device-wise specific questions that I see coming in. Um, so the first one here is, can device-wise collect data from Siemens controllers and can I use it remotely to set up a PLC using like S7 software? Absolutely, yes. So, so DeviceWise has every single Siemens driver that you can imagine, from S7 to S5, all the different models, the uh, 300s, the 400s, and you name it. All the different drivers for Siemens, they are available there. When we are talking to a Siemens controller, we can use also open protocol like OPC, but we like to talk the native driver. That brings so many advantages, especially on the ultra low latency that we can communicate with the controller and the simplicity of that. So I love every time that I have a project that I need to connect to a Siemens PLC to use the native driver. 
so we can collect the data from this controller. So if you probably based on your question, you have a machine that that runs on a Siemens PLC. That's what I'm assuming. So we can collect the data from this PLC. Doesn't matter where your machine is. So we can translate this raw data of the PLC in important information for your machine. For example, you can monitor how many hours uh, did you run that machine, what is your efficiency, what is your cycle time, your microcycle time, your machine throughput, your quality yield, etc. So that becomes a smart machine. So now you have all the KPIs. And you can use device-wise and device-wise view to calculate all this, visualize this on the edge, or push this data to the cloud where you can combine data from this machine that is in that specific site or any other machine that might be in a, you know, a different customer site, uh, for example. And by using our secure remote access, you can open a network connection like a VPN with all the security around that, open your S7 uh, software, and now even go one layer two where you can visualize your ladder logic and change your ladder logic for a remote maintenance, for example. Great, thanks, Ricardo. And this next one's for you as well. Um, can device-wise be used to calculate um, OEE, or do I need other applications? Absolutely. Device-wise is uh, the perfect platform for you to calculate OEE or any other type of KPI. So you can use our edge logic to uh, to, to create this map, to calculate the KPI and to monitor it. If the, the, the KPI is above or below a certain threshold that you want to monitor, you can create an alarm and visualize this. There's something also very exciting that we are working on. Uh, Telit is working with something that we are calling Smart Start Package, where we are creating templates for OE, for preventative maintenance and more, uh, that we provide these templates for customers making the time of the application even faster because now they have all these templates ready there. So stay tuned because that's also coming. Great, thanks. Um, and this is a, a great question too we've got here. Um, if I already have gateways in the field, can I upgrade them to this package? You can. It just definitely depends on models. We've been out since you know 2006, so older products probably won't be able to but we definitely have a list of products on the web where you can upgrade and support the, the device-wise container to be installed on them. So if you have some ground fields, whether they're in the factory or if they're remote sites, um, we absolutely can support that. Great, thanks. Um, I believe that's all the time that we have for today. Um, I know there are a handful of questions that we didn't get to, um, so we'll be sure to follow up with you directly. Um, Ricardo, Michael, Matthew, I do want to thank you all for um, your time today. Um, audience, please be sure to check your inboxes in the coming days for the replay link and other resources, um, and appreciate you joining us today. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you.